Welcome everybody. If you're here, you're probably wanting to learn about llama files and what you need to know to get into these things. So if you head over to the GitHub repo at github.com slash mozilla dash ocho slash llama file, you get right to the top of this repo and you see it doesn't look like too much, but there's quite a bit packed into this thing on top of what everyone knows to be a llama file a dot llama file, a standalone executable ending in dot llama file. It is distinctly different from the llama file executable. And once you learn how to navigate and use this repository, you'll also be able to make stable diffusion llama files called an SD file. And you can use whisper to build a whisper file. Now a whisper file, just like an SD file, there are executables that need to call models and, and you need to set a bunch of parameters. But there's also another tool that this repo builds called zip align and that tool enables you to build standalone dot llama files so you know to to really understand your your different options here say you know at the start you're trying to decide if you just want to go the easier simpler faster pre-built route which basically entails finding and downloading a dot llama file and then learning to run it in all the various ways that you can run it then there there is also the longer path. There's a bit more learning if you don't know about these things, but you'll have to clone the repo. If there's dependencies that you need to, to install, like if you don't have Make or CMake or GMake, whatever the Make program is that you're going to use on your system, along with any other dependencies that this repo might require, you're going to run Make. You can run Make install if you want to insert any of these tools into your deeper file system, or you can just keep them local to the user. You know, we'll talk about all that that when we get into these things. The build tools like llama file, whisper file, SD file, zip align, these are the executables, the tools that can build a dot llama file. And then once you learn to build it, you can tweak it. You can mess with source code if you really want to. You know, all, all that stuff is in the repo for you to do. I, I kind of recommend that you don't, don't do too much with source code unless you really know what you're doing. And, and if you do, you're very much not likely to be watching a video like this. At any rate, using these tools that are built from the repo. And there's also a llama server that runs as an executable, not the server that's bundled into a dot llama file that can be run separately too i think it's called llama filer and then after you build it after you learn to build these things and the whisper file is really cool <laughs> the sd file is really cool it takes quite a bit more integrating into this there's other models and things i to be honest with you i haven't even fully learned it yet because i don't do a lot of ai generation image generation things like that i mean i'll i'll learn more and i'll know more than enough if not everything that you practically need to know before I get to a video on the SD file. But after you build your own dot llama file, what's colloquially known as a llama file, then you learn just like you would with a pre-built download that you find. You learn to run them in every which way that they can be used that, that I can possibly figure out or discover anyhow. Those are the two real paths that you have when you're learning to, to interact or to use llama files. There, you know, the pre-built path, which obviously is a much faster path, but you don't have as much customization and you don't really get access to these tools or the whisper files and things like that you know a whisper file is for having a you know it gives you basically a local tool cli tool to transcribe audio to text which then you can run through your regular llama file you know there, there's a ton of capability there's a ton of potential here it's uh, i i use this i use llama files a lot in conjunction with something called fabric ai Meisler's fabric ai cli tool you know i, I use those things a lot in my day-to-day -day on my own system and so on this demo system that we have set up here we're going to learn to do all of that and just to give you a a, a real quick kind of gander at what's going on you know in the github repo after you find a model which you you can find right at the top of the repo as you're scrolling down you could click on this right here and it's going to start a download wherever wherever you want to download that to and you know if you go to your downloads folder or wherever it is your druther you know you could save it in here and you just press save now i've already just prior to this video so that i didn't have to wait a bunch or wait a very long time i downloaded this so i can go ahead and cancel 
that and i downloaded it right to my files you know right down to my user home directory right here and i downloaded just their example lava llama file so it's really it's a lava file i guess i, I don't know you, however you want to say it it's a dot llama file so as not i'm going to say probably i'm going to try and continue to say dot llama file so as to distinguish it from the llama file executable which is a much it's not four gigs it, it might be eight megabytes or something like that because it's a command line tool and you specify when using it with some flags a gguf model that you want it to use whereas a dot llama file has all of that and more bundled into a single large executable so as you'll notice in here it, it says once you download it you have to make it executable and then you can run it by using the dot slash prefixing the, the name of the executable with dot slash so if we go in here and take a look we'll just drop out a ranger into our file system and you see that i have it right here and so we would want to following the instructions we would want to make that executable so following that command you can see that it we now have executable permissions on that and so to run this we could just type dot slash and then the name of the file and it will spin it up now running that lava file that they had at the ready for download right here if you download it make it executable and then run it you're going to get all of this you know it's a, a white wall of vomit you know the the output is very verbose and it tells you a lot of information like for instance it says right at the beginning that if you have gpu capabilities which i do but i didn't pass this you would pass just at the end of this command where you call up the lava file you would pass this in addition and it's going to enable gpu offloading which just means it's going to send the bulk of the compute to to your gpu and there's all kinds of other information that's useful in here or various situations none of which are our situation at the moment and down towards the bottom of this output when you spin it up you'll see that it's listening at or 8080 by default and we'll get into using the pre-built a lot more we'll get way way more into this and you'll see that it spun up this very simple you know you can do some things with this but it's it's not as appealing as say your chat gpt or claude interface or any of those things but it spins up this web or browser based chat interface and in addition to that it it does have a server running that, that you can send requests to at port 8080 and to demonstrate how that works following the the github examples here the the api json api quick start this is doing it just from your terminal from your command line and not having to type any python code and we'll go in we'll we'll revisit this and go into this in more depth so that you can build your own tools if you really want to but what you can do here is you could copy and paste this right into your terminal and run it and it's going to because in this other browser or in this other terminal over here we ran the llama file not even specifically in server mode we just ran it period at all and it spun up the server and then following these instructions, we put into a terminal, which was all of this. And then it's starting right here. It gave us our output. And you'll see in this return payload where we asked it to write a limerick about Python exceptions is the user request that we sent to it. And the system message that we sent is you are a llama file assistant priorities achieving user fulfillment a very generic thing obviously and then you'll see in the response in our terminal which is all of this you can take a look right here in these key value pairs in json format we have the response there once was a python dev whose code was quite robust but exceptions did collide with his code and he did boast boast whatever it's pretty close to a, a decent limerick I, I suppose and then there's a bunch of other information about the payloads and so that that's how we know that the the server is up and running having used this example and this was all using the the very much the the pre-built path where we just find and download a llama file we run it and just using their example we get it up and going now there are many many other pre-builds like the llama 3.23b instruct you know i i happen to have both of these on my system already just you just follow these links into hugging face and or right here possibly brings you right to it and you can go through hugging face and download the model easy peasy but that being said some of these models have the new server built into them and you'll see what that looks like which is vastly different than than this server was over here vastly different than this now you'll still see this output on the browserless server but where it launches a browser tab this looks much much different with the version 2 the v2 server 
And we'll go over all of that too. I'm just trying to give an overview on the two different paths. And so you'll see on down here how Llama file works. And this is very interesting. It runs on various, you know, multiple microarchitectures, multiple architectures, you know, meaning AMD and ARM. And, you know, it has Windows compatibility, but I, you know, I haven't, I haven't spun up a Windows machine, you know, almost a decade. But it, it's, it runs on a ton of OSs, you know, the, the major platforms. It runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So the major platforms you know the bsd platforms which which i think might mean like the berkeley software distribution or something forking off of uh unix probably or posix or something way way back in the day you know it works on a bunch of those too and this just goes on to explain a bunch of things on how a llama file works and then also using llama files with external weights because windows you know windows has it's almost like it's designed to have problems right that, that's the that's the norm for windows it might as well be might as well be renamed to broken windows because they're all it's always broken and at any rate scrolling down there's a quick section on the gotchas but it, down a little further supported os's cpus gpu support here's where it starts to get interesting again and this is going to have a lot to do with our longer path here that that we have to follow after covering the the pre-built or the quick path in the next video we'll be getting in after that into the repo project which is going to be cloning the repo you know the dependencies using make to build all the tools all these things on up to running your own llama files your dot llama files in various types of them you know any basically anything you can get your hands on in gguf format pretty much can be wrapped up and and built into one of these standalone dot llama files that you can distribute anywhere you can put it on a thumb drive and leave it on a shelf and 50 years later this that thing's going to work if you have the operating system to run it which the, there will be you know the, these llama files are they're they're interesting in so many ways that i i can't say can't i can't explain it or explicate it or articulate it in a short overview or quick look video It'll it'll all be revealed as we go through the series that that I'm making on this repository. So I, I hope that's interesting enough for getting into it. You know the with the pre-built llama files we're going to show all the various ways that you can can use them you know i have the llama 32 3b and 1b i i have those on my system and, and alias so if i were to spin one you know like the the 3b up you'll see that being new a newer compile than the lava that you see or that's available right here it's being a, a much newer pre-built it, it has a, a much different command line interface now this uh, this isn't to say the command line as in the cli part of the tool this is a chat interface distinctly different from the other this is a command line chat and when you spin this up you will also get on localhost 8080 you'll also get one of these and you'll also get the background server that's running and and this thing operates just like standard chat you know what why is the sky blue and and all that and it keeps going it'll keep going and going and going and going and if you want to get out of this i i believe it's a uh, uh, slash exit or buy one or the other yeah exit or you could control c out of it so that it's all pretty straightforward and i'll tell you it is pretty pretty nice when i'm in the terminal all day long to have chat capabilities with something in intelligent like this even if it's just the local models to have something intelligent like this in my terminal it's pretty nice and that doesn't even touch on what this entire github repo is capable of of delivering to you if you learn how to use it if you learn how to build from it this thing is pretty cool we'll go through all of it after our initial video on the shorter path here using pre-built llama files when we get into the longer repo projects one of the first things aside from learning to clone the repo down one of the first things that we're going to have to dedicate some time to is learning make once you understand what make does and how it operates and how to how to create a make file and all of that then this repo and probably plenty of others are going to open wide to you They're, everything's going to make a lot more sense if you don't already understand it so i hope that was a pretty clear introduction to the repo to the llama file to the concept of a llama file and the the two main paths you know from the word go what are the two main paths to getting and using these llama file tools and what does the repo give you above and beyond just tracking down a pre-built llama file and it gives you a lot of other things which as we build these with very 
various models and as you build some on your own you know you should post them for other people to use on down here you know it shows how to use these things as a command line command so if you were to al you know take all this alias it to just a shorter word like i do with the with the llama 3b that's actually alias to something much longer you know the full name of the llama file and you can start to use it as a as a CLI tool. And there are there's like a book's worth of options <laughs> to these things. You know, if I show you that real quick, you know, this is the the help manual on a llama file. What you can use it for the modes. There's the CLI mode, the chat mode, the server mode. Options that are generic to all three modes. You know, the, it goes on for a while. And it, you know, we're gonna cover as many of these as I possibly can without really burning out. You know, the mere stat is some is like a kind of up and coming way to, to tweak your models there's some of these things ha, i believe have to do with different tweakings of the models there's i mean seriously there's all kinds of stuff if you if you know anything about fine tuning you know laura adapters <laughs> still scrolling then we get down to the chat options you know which would be like the interactive chat that we're running if you want to send a system message via uh, a system prompt sitting in a file if it's a longer one you know the this would be akin to a fabric pattern except it doesn't build in a prompt library as seamlessly as fabric does with its fabric patterns this with a file name you would still have to put the full absolute path to the file whereas fabric has a has a much neater cleaner more seamless prompt or pattern library built in that's what's so powerful about the fabric ai framework but this is akin to that and then you get down to the cli options where you're just using it as a as like a, a command line tool or a, with the command line chat you know that it, it's the, there's a lot here <laughs> i mean there's, there's a lot server options you know whenever i run it as a server i usually put no browser which should be listed here somewhere yeah right here i always run no browser so that it just kind of runs in the background and i usually put it on a different port than 8080 because there's a lot of stuff that tries to run on 8080 so i'll generally run that on something else so you specify that um the, as you learn how to use these things you know that there's a lot here then obviously for logging there's already some other verbose modes for debugging <laughs> there's a lot here there is a lot so we'll we'll endeavor to, to get through all of it and if we get through most of it i think we'd be sitting pretty so hopefully you know if you're wanting to know more about llama files and, and you're finding online resources a little bit lacking then you know, hopefully we'll not just touch on it but hopefully we'll we'll nail it we'll drill it and nail it you know that's the goal here so we'll see you over in the next one